Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for better karma next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Wobbuffet. We've built plenty of helpful, good Pokemon that are nice and fun members of the team. So it's only right that now we build a pocket monster, an ender of Nuzlocks, a real thorn in my side, and a literal thorn build for D&D 5e. It's a gimmick build, so even though I'm salty, I'm gonna have a great time. But I do hate this little blue bastard. If we encounter a Wobbuffet, we are probably going to lose the run. Oh no. Wobble dee wobble dee drop into my grave plot. What do you want me to do? You just want me to hit you. Come on. Give me this one thing. Now will someone please have the decency to punch me in the face? Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, this is obviously going to be a little bit different of a build, so the goals are gonna be a little different too. Most Pokemon can learn a huge pool of moves, but Wobbuffet is really simple. So simple that we can fit everything it can possibly do on one graphic. Step one, Shadow Tag, a passive ability that stops anyone from getting away from us. Step two, a dump truck full of HP, making hits so negligible we'll win fights by standing still. Step three, Counter and Mirror Coat, moves that let us do revenge damage against creatures that hit us with physical or special attacks. Step 4, Safeguard, the ability to shut down status effects and ensuring any damage done to us will be punished with the full force of our jelly. Step 5, Destiny Bond, you never have to worry about dying alone if you kill the person who killed you. Those are the standard Wobbuffet moves, but you actually could have more if you started as a baby. And if we can grab those baby moves, I say... Why not? Encore tells people to keep doing what they're doing, especially if what they're doing is hitting us in the face. Amnesia is a buff to your special defenses to slow your inevitable descent into deflation. Charm does the same thing, making your opponent worse at hitting you physically, which will work out great in D&D. Finally, we need the power to do nothing, like extra nothing. We need to splash or hop, depending on your translation. For stats, we'll be using the standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Constitution, intelligence, and charisma up at 15. You have a bunch of health, you're a psychic type, and you're kind of based off of a comedian. That means you get to dump strength, dexterity, and wisdom. Low dexterity is actually going to be an asset. The other things just need to be low to make the other things high. That's the way it is, ma'am. Wobbuffet live in the dark and never make the first attack. To me, that sounds like an ooze, which means we get to go plasmoid. That's technically an unearthed arcana at the moment, so if your DM isn't cool with that, you might have to switch it up at home. That gives you plus one to three stats if you want, which we do. Charisma, intelligence, and constitution. Stat are a little tight, believe it or not. The tiny blue punching bag with hit me tattooed on their face is a bit mad. You're amorphous, letting you squeeze through the narrowest crack, and you have advantage on grapple checks or attempts to slip out of grapple checks. That's not going to be our method of shadow tag, though it was considered. The problem is you can only grapple creatures one size larger than you, which would mean large creatures. Waylord would be able to escape, Kyogre would be able to escape, and then it wouldn't die right before the Elite Four! God, oh, I'm still salty. Anyway, 60 feet of dark vision to live in the dark and hide your tail. You can hold your breath for an hour, have a natural resilience to resist acid and poison damage, as well as advantage on saves against being poisoned. It's always been weird to me that psychic is super effective against poison instead of resisting it. Shouldn't the benefit of precognition help you avoid being poisoned, not help you harm a poisoner? Anyway, you also get to shape yourself, an ability to give yourself arms, legs, heads, pseudopods. It's just fun flavor stuff you get for being made of jelly. For your background, entertainer gets you acrobatics and performance skills, the skills I want, and you're kind of a comedian. A really dark comedian. What do you get when you hit a Pokemon with massively high HP and low defenses knowing they have counter moves? I'll tell you what you get. You get what you Wobbing deserve! We'll kick things off as a Warlock, because obviously Wobbuffet needs a trainer. Grab Intimidation and Deception for your skills of choice. You don't actually look scary to the uninitiated, but to those who know who you are and what horrors you're capable of, you're terrifying. For your patron of choice, it honestly doesn't really matter. So Celestial Warlock, that'll give you Healing Light, a number of d6s equal to one plus your warlock level that you can use to heal a creature as a bonus action spending an amount equal to your charisma modifier so 2d6 at this point use it on yourself for some leftovers or potions from your trainer for your spells true strike is useless it wastes your action doing nothing but giving you advantage on a weapon attack next turn we're not even going to carry weapons that's splash one goal already done we don't need any other cantrips from the warlock list but we really need first level spells armor of agathis gives you five temporary hp when an enemy hits you with a melee attack and you have
have that temporary HP, they take five cold damage. As you upcast the spell higher, you get five more temporary HP and deal five more cold damage. Keep in mind, they take the full damage every time they hit you, regardless of whether or not they deal the full temporary HP amount. So right now, if one creature hits you for two damage, they take five cold damage, then the next creature to hit you will still take five cold damage as well. That's gonna be our counter since it's for melee attacks and it'll get much better moving forward. Hellish Rebuke will be our mirror coat, letting you use a reaction to force a dexterity saving throw on a creature within 60 feet of you that deals damage to you, dealing 2d10 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It also increases by 1d10 fire damage each time you scale it up. Ideally, we'd be able to take spells that don't have damage types since counter and mirror coat don't in the game, but that's just something we have to deal with in translation. Some stuff's gonna be a little worse, but a lot of stuff is gonna be so much better. And that's enough Warlock. One level is really all you need, since you'll actually get better at casting Armor of Agathus and Hellish Rebuke with spell casting rather than Packed Magic. That's because spell casting from a class like Wizard gives you ninth level spell slots eventually, while Packed Magic will cap off at the fifth level before giving you Mystic Arcanum spells, which you can't use to upcast lower level Warlock spells. But when you multiclass the two classes together, you can use spell casting spells with your Packed Magic slots and vice versa. So, Wizards, they get Arcane Recovery, letting you recover a number of spell slots equal to half your Wizard level on a short rest, getting you your PP back for some more revenge spamming. For cantrips, we don't really need any, but your hidden ability is telepathy, so message lets you whisper to another creature within 120 feet of you, and they can whisper back. Hey Blastoise, let me know when you're gonna surf so I can step out of the way. Works for me. For first level spells, Shield will work as a version of Amnesia, adding 5 to your AC as a reaction when the damage comes in. Mage Armor will be a more permanent defensive buff, setting your AC to 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor. Though, in your case, it's actually minus your dexterity modifier, which is fine, you want to get hit. There really aren't any other spells we need at this level, so at this point you just have an extra warlock cantrip, two extra wizard cantrips, two more prepared wizard spells per long rest, and four more in your spell book. We're going to keep checking in with that as we move forward. For now though, second level wizards can choose a school, and the school of abjuration will take armor of agathus from a decent spell to a way of life. That's because you get arcane ward, meaning that when you cast an abjuration spell of first level or higher, you gain a ward to absorb damage equal to your intelligence modifier plus double your wizard level. That ward takes damage when you should, before temporary HP, and then regular HP. This refreshes with every cast, so Armor of Agathus gives you 5 temporary HP and 5 arcane ward damage resistance, which is not temporary HP. Every time you're hit with a melee attack, the ward takes the damage first, then the temporary HP, so you'll get to pop some more counters before it's shattered. There's a pretty prevalent theory that Wobbuffet is the black tail, so desperately protected by the big blue sack up top, so that would make the big blue sack the arcane ward, while Wobbuffet proper sits safely on the ground. No new spells at this level, but third level will get some more options. That's because third level wizards can learn second level spells, and I would like quite a few. Ray of Enfeeblement is the most important, firing a ranged spell attack at a creature that doesn't deal damage. Instead, the creature will deal half damage with strength-based attacks for a minute, depending on your concentration, working basically one for one with how charm works in the Pokemon games. Except charm can stack in this kind of can. Suggestion gives a creature a task to do for the next eight hours that isn't directly harmful to it. That's directly harmful to the creature you cast it on, not harmful to you. So a suggestion for your suggestion of punch me in the face until I pass out is fully acceptable, dealing the armor of Agathus damage over and over again as you get them in the encore, maybe. I kind of feel like that's up to your DM if that counts as directly harmful to them, knowing that the armor of Agathus would hurt them, but in my opinion, it's not directly harmful, it's indirectly harmful, if that makes sense. For level wizards get an ability score improvement or a feat, I want the tough feat for plus two HP every level you get and every level you already have. That's 10 more HP right now and 40 by the end of things. Unfortunately, we need wizard levels and the wizard hit die is a D6, so tough is definitely gonna help us out a little bit. For this level spell, Maximilian's Earth and Grasp will be an early option for Shadow Tag, forcing a strength saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they take 2d6 bludgeoning damage and are restrained, giving them zero movement speed so they can't get away. They have to make a strength check against your DC to break out, but that would require some serious mold breaking. Detect Thoughts lets you read surface level thoughts or probe deeper into a creature's head if they fail a wisdom saving throw. You know how every Wobbuffet 
that just knows what you're gonna do and picks the perfect move to ruin your day? That's Detect Thoughts. It's a psychic type after all. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells. Counter spell will keep you safely guarded from status effects by shutting down spells of third level or lower automatically and higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus the spell's level. Sleep is a first level spell that would put you to sleep. Ray of Sickness would poison you at the first level. Hold Person would paralyze you. That's a second level spell. Rhymes Binding Ice would be a freeze spell, also second level. The only thing not covered in terms of status effects would be the fourth level confusion spell, which would be confusion, and the fifth level immolation, which I would say is the burn. But you can upcast counterspell later to shut down higher level spells pretty early, and I don't know if you noticed this, we're not going to be using all that many spell slots. You just get to stand still and wait for people to crash into you. Bestow curse, curse is an enemy to have something happen to them if they fail a wisdom saving throw. There's a few options listed in the player's handbook, but since it's vague, it's my first opportunity to advocate for it to become destiny bond. Suggest a curse that if you hit zero HP in the next turn, so does the creature. That might seem a little strong, so we'll get another option later. It's honestly the hardest thing to bring into D&D. Since Glyph of Warding can't move 10 feet without dissolving, contingency can only target you, and you can't cast spells when you fall unconscious because you're unconscious. So yeah, maybe we'll find something else later. Sixth level abjuration wizards get projected ward, letting you send your ward to absorb damage for your allies as a reaction. Safeguard does work for all of your allies as well, though I would just save that ward for yourself since third level armor of Agathus will give you 15 ward at HP, 15 temporary HP, and 15 cold damage to every creature that hits you with a melee attack until they can get through the 15 temporary HP. And you can also refresh that 15 ward at HP with a shield spell as a reaction every round. Think of it as leftovers, a pretty solid held item for any Wobbuffet, even though buffets normally don't let you bring leftovers home. We don't need any more third level spells, so add one more to your list of unused prepared spells and two more to your spell book. Seventh level wizards get more revenge options, or I suppose one more revenge option with fire shield. That can be a shield from fire or a shield made of fire. A chill shield gives you resistance to fire damage, and a warm shield gives you resistance to cold damage. If a creature within five feet of you hits you with a melee attack, they take 2d8 cold damage or fire damage, depending on what type of shield you went with. It doesn't require your concentration or use your reaction, so like Armor of Agathus, it's a totally passive punishment for punching the bad bag. We don't need any other spells from this level, I'll keep track of the extras. Eighth level wizards get another ability score improvement, start off your constitution for more HP, nine more at this point, since that scales retroactively. We also don't need any more spells here, but maybe we'll grab some at the next level. That's because ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells. Wall of Force is a better shadow tag, creating an indestructible wall of force that can be a 10 foot radius hemispherical dome, or 10 10 by 10 foot panels that can't be destroyed or dispelled with dispel magic, though disintegrate can blow it up and creatures can still teleport in and out. So we're still not quite to shadow tag, especially since this requires your concentration, but it's still an upgraded version. Rary's telepathic bond connects eight willing creatures with a telepathic connection to communicate with them as you like for an hour. No concentration required if you'd like the other passive ability, but like nobody wants hidden ability wob effect. Come on, that fifth level slot could just get you 25 damage per hit of armor of Agathus. Tenth level abjuration wizards get improved abjuration, letting you add your proficiency bonus to your intelligence checks to shut down spells with Counterspell, helping make up for the lack of intelligence investment. We're also not grabbing any more spells yet, but there are six level ones I like. And you get some at the 11th level wizard, like Globe of Invulnerability, giving you a 10 foot radius of protection for you and your allies, automatically shutting down spells of fifth level or lower that would come through. That's a safeguard that does cover immolation for a burn and confusion for confusion for a minute, depending on your concentration. So if it lasts a minute in D&D and five turns in Pokemon, that means Pokemon turns are 12 seconds long. If that metric means anything or correlates in any way. We don't need any more six level spells, add them to the list. 12 level wizards get another ability score improvement, cap off your constitution for 13 more HP at this point, and a minimum of plus eight every level moving forward thanks to the tough heat. You're a tank with virtually no AC and a D6 hit die. What the hell are you? 13th level wizards can learn seventh level spells. Force cage is truly the best option for shadow tag. That creates a 20 foot cage or a 10 foot walled off box. The 10 foot walled off box is supposed to be worse because it's smaller, but you want people to be within melee range, so it's actually better. You're not locked in with them, they're locked in with you. Nothing can get out with magic, even if the creature has a teleportation option, they have to make a charisma saving throw first. Then you can just counterspell their teleport, which would also give you 29 arcane ward HP. It lasts for an hour. No concentration required, so it's time to begin the stall wars. No other 7th level spells needed, add it to the list. 14th level abjuration wizards get spell resistance, giving you advantage on saving throws against spells and resistance to damage from spells. Temporary HP benefit from resistances as well, so if you drop a 7th level slot on armor of Agathus, 
you effectively have 70 temporary HP against spells. 15th level wizards can learn 8th level spells. Telepathy lets you pick a creature to communicate with telepathically anywhere on the same plane of existence to you. It's really simple, debatably worse than Rary's telepathic bond, but Wobbuffets are telepathic, so I'll grab it. But I'll also recommend Armor of Agathis with 40 temporary HP and 40 damage to everyone who punches you. Don't need any more 8th level spells. Add them to the list. 16th level wizards get another ability score improvement. Bump your intelligence modifier for arcane wards, counter spells, and harder to escape from cages. Still no more spells, so add it to the list. 17th level wizards get 9th level spells, and there's really only one way that would work for Destiny Bond. Not power word kill, you need to be awake for that. I'm thinking Wish. That lets you do anything. It's kind of a cop out, but it's the only way to get it. Wish for whoever drops you to zero HP to instantly drop to zero HP as well. Since that isn't a spell of eighth level or lower, you're gonna take an ouchie until you finish a long rest. You take a D10 of necrotic damage per spell level you cast, your strength drops to three for two D4 days, and there's a 33% chance you can never cast Wish again. Normally, this is devastating, but you don't need strength and you don't really cast so many spells. You just have a ton of HP and you don't need to worry about wishes. That's our last spell, but that doesn't mean we're done. There are still two more things that are gonna make Wobbuffet even more monstrous. 18th level wizards get spell mastery, letting you pick a spell of first and second level to cast at will at their lowest level. Shield is normally a pretty great option, basically giving you plus five AC permanently if you don't mind missing an opportunity attack. But for you, it's also refreshing plus 40 to your arcane ward every single turn and 43 by the time we cap this off with maxed out intelligence. For your second level spell, that's kind of up to you. Suggestion's a decent suggestion, and Detect Thoughts is a decent Detect Thoughts. Our capstone is the 19th level of Wizard for one last ability score improvement. Cap off your intelligence modifier for maximum arcane wards and the most brutal saving throws to escape. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you have a dump truck's worth of HP, around 224 with median rolls, and you can add 45 temporary HP with a 9th level armor of Agathis and refresh 40 3 HP. You're also able to punish melee attackers like nobody's business. With a 9th level armor of Agathis, every melee hit against you deals 45 damage to the creature who hit you, plus 2d8 more cold damage from a fire shield, so let's do a little math on that. I grabbed Anakin Skywalker, one of the biggest Nova smashers we've ever made. The reason is, with Hold Person Up, all of his attacks are critical hits, so if he spends all of his spell slots on Divine Smites against you while you're held, he can deal 2d6 plus 12d8 plus five each hit and make five attacks in a round. With a median roll, that's 59 damage. So it'll take two hits to get through the armor of Agathis and your arcane ward. That means he's gonna take 10 D8 plus 90 cold damage from hitting a paralyzed Wobbuffet with all of his attacks, dealing 203 damage to Wobbuffet's real HP. So if Wob can make one save after one of those hits, then cast armor of Agathis again, Wobbuffet can beat Anakin Skywalker by standing still. It's over. He's got the high ground. And you could just shut down Hold Person with Counterspell to stop those crits from even happening. Finally, even if the build works best protecting its squishy tail, Wobbuffet can keep the party safe with spells like Globe of Invulnerability and Projected Ward to keep the damage off. For weaknesses, ranged attacks get to ignore Armor of Agathis, and you'll have to hit them with Hellish Rebuke instead, which isn't nearly as good. You're also lacking strength and dexterity. Even with acrobatics proficiency, you could get grappled, which would be so awful. Finally, this is a very reactive build, not taking initiative to do things with its actions. Unless you use all of those spells we didn't grab, that's one Warlock cantrip, four Wizard cantrips, nine prepared spells per day, and 19 more in the spell. In addition to the wildly effective lockdown strat, you can can still learn spells to deal damage, teleport your friends, fly, turn them into vapor, suck people's blood, run super fast, make a giant mansion, whatever the heck you want because the wizard list is enormous. Shut down your rivals, punish your attackers, and be a solid doubles partner. Just like, I don't know, bake your DM some cookies or something. Nobody likes fighting Wobbuffet. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.